All right, guys, STAT 1800. Uh, the purpose of this video uh, is just to explain some things. And, uh, I mean, this is a very important video that you need to watch all the way through because I'm going to talk about uh, a lot of different things. Some of it I'm not real crazy about talking about, but it's just, just the way it is. There's some stuff going on I need to talk to you guys about. Um, but um, so, so, guys, watch, uh, watch the whole video. But... Uh, the first part of it, I want to um, to set the stage for this week. Um, we're going to get into uh, something called correlation and regression, and um, it's it's one of the most uh, important tools that we uh, discuss in a class of this nature. Um, because the, of the way that uh, Thanksgiving holiday um, falls and um, you know, believe it or not, I, I do have a heart, and I do care about uh, about you guys being able to get st statistics out of your way and be able to spend time with your family. Um, so, so I've kind of restructured the schedule a little bit, and um, so, so what you're going to see this week is you're going to see a, 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 I would say, a light introduction to correlation and regression. And the reason I'm keeping it light is I don't want to. Uh, bombard you with a you know a lot of sum of squares and the more complicated stuff right before Thanksgiving because I know a lot of you will be traveling and even though these videos are posted eight days before your assignment is due, uh, it's, it's a lot of our nature to procrastinate. Uh, I'm guilty too, so um, uh, so so anyway, I've just made the decision to kind of restructure things and take it light on correlation and regression uh, this this week now. Uh, one thing you're going to notice, uh, okay, let's, let, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. Correlation regression is a technique that examines the relationship between two quantitative variables. And a lot of times you'll see people that know squat nothing about statistics talk about a correlation uh, between maybe uh, gender and, um, I don't know, GPA, which is quantitative. So gender is clearly categorical, GPA is quantitative. When people say, say stuff like this, when they use the relate, in examining the relationship between a categorical variable and a quantitative variable, and they use the terminology correlation, that tells me that they don't squat nothing uh, about statistics. There are statistical techniques that exist that we can examine GPA over gender, specifically a two-sample t-test that we've studied uh, previously in this class. The quantitative variables, so to examine the relationship between two quantitative variables. So if we wanted to look, for example, uh, maybe high school GPA and first year college GPA, then we have two quantitative variables and correlation regression is the tool for you. But uh, if we're looking at the relationship between a categorical variable and a quantitative variable, then correlation regression uh, is not the tool for you. Now, here's what I want to accomplish in this video. I want to go through an example uh, and just touch the highlights of correlation and regression. But following this video, you're going to have <clears throat> some videos that I posted in my STAT 1150 class. Um, and again, I, I, what I want you to get, get you to know in detail in these videos is exactly uh, what I taught uh, in my STAT 1150. So I didn't see any reason for me to go through a couple of hours redoing these videos just so I could change the heading from STAT 1150 to STAT 1800. Guys, I'm swamped, I'm busy, and that seems a little goofy for me to spend two hours uh, just so I can change the heading in the video because it's the same stuff whether we're teaching correlation regression to stat 1150 or stat 1800 or psychology or business whatever it is correlation regression uh, is the uh, same stuff now um, let's uh, talk about a couple of things let's uh, let's just start out with an example and let's say that we want to look at the relationship between um, the calories in cereal with the amount of sugar in cereals. And there's actually a data set uh, in your textbook called Cereals, and it's the reason I chose this, 
um, that, that we can use uh, and take a, take a look uh, at, uh, at the measurements. So, uh, guys, if you go to uh, data sets from your textbook and go down to Chapter 12, uh, you'll see, oh, wow, college football, that'd be a cool one. Um, well, maybe later. All right, so anyway, I'm kind of going all ADHD on you here. Uh, let's look at the relationship uh, uh, for um, calories and sugar. So you can see that we have uh, calories as a quantitative variable. Uh, we have, it looks like we have uh, uh, seven brands, and we have sugar, which is a quantitative variable. So guys, the very first thing I would want to do here is I would want to look at a picture. I'd want to visualize uh, my, my relationship. So guys, to do that, I'm going to go to a, um, a scatter plot. And my x variable, uh, I'm going to uh, look at the relationship between calories and sugar. So I'm just going to put those the way that they're presented to me. And uh, really, uh, that's about all I need to, to do here. I don't need any of the fancy smancy color schemes and stuff like that. I just want a bare bones basic uh, scatter plot. Now, I look at this scatter plot and I see a tendency of my data going uh, well, I didn't want to do that. Uh, looking kind of raising to the right. Now, in the very first video that follows this one, uh, you know, I'm going to explain relationships. We have positive relationships. We have negative relationships. We have strong. Uh, we have um, uh, weak and moderate relationships. So, again, there's more to explain about that in upcoming videos. The next thing I would want to do after... Uh, looking at a picture, so first thing, uh, look at a picture. And for this type of um, uh, uh, relationship, we would look at a scatter plot. <clears throat> the next thing we would do is we would want to look at numerical summaries. And the numerical summaries that we present in this case are called R and R squared. Uh, R is our correlation coefficient. R squared is, is our coefficient of determination. Again, I put up one video that describes uh, these things in a lot of detail, but to uh, find those using um, StatCrunch, uh, we would just go to data. I'm sorry, we go to stat, and uh, we would go to columns. Well, no, I take that back. I'd probably just go to correlation. And I would look at the relationship between well, I don't really want that one. Well, this is fun. Because I'm losing my mind here. <laughs> All right, there we go. Finally, uh, and uh, I want to compute. So I can get the correlation as being 0.84, and again in the videos I'll tell you uh, what, what that actually means. Uh, we could get, uh, we could square that value and get uh, our R squared, which is our coefficient of determination, and again that's thoroughly explained. Uh, now, let me back up just a little bit. When is this correlation regression uh, <clears throat> appropriate? Um, well, it, it determines, it's determined by the scatter plot between X and Y. So if we get a relationship that looks kind of like this, we can see that this relationship is kind of well fit by a straight line, and we call that a linear relationship. So when we have a relationship between X and Y that's a linear relationship, then correlation and regression are appropriate. However, when we get a relationship between X and Y that maybe looks like this, which clearly isn't well modeled by a straight line, a linear relationship, then correlation regression is not appropriate. Now, there are statistical techniques 
this would be fit by a, a kind of a curved relationship. Uh, I would probably look at some exponential or something, but it, we don't cover that in this class. But anyway, the, we start out, you know, is the correlation regression appropriate? We start out looking at a scatter plot to see if we have a relationship uh, that's uh, modeled by a linear function. If it's not modeled by a straight line, then all of the stuff I'm going to teach you is not appropriate. All this R, R squared, you know, all this stuff no, is not, uh, not appropriate. Guys, the next thing we do is once we get our relationship between x and y. Again, we first look at a scatter plot. We second describe it by calculating r. We next describe it further by calculating r squared. We next <clears throat> better explain the relationship by creating a model to better explain that relationship. Now guys, we call this a lot of things. It's called a regression model. It's called a line of best fit. But at the end of the day, it is our y hat, which is our predicted y from two values. <clears throat> this b0 uh, is our intercept. And b1 is our slope. Now, in some of the videos, I'll call B0B and B1M. So guys, Y equals MX plus B is a standard form for slope-intercept form. This is just kind of fancier notation, if you was not really fancier, but it's more appropriate notation for learning uh, uh, correlation, well, specifically regression. So if I wanted to fit <clears throat> a relationship between, for example, calories and sugar. I would go to stat, I would go to regression, and I would go to simple linear regression. Let's say I want to predict sugar from calories. So again, guys, you know, I go into this a lot more uh, in the videos. And pretty soon we're going to get into hypothesis tests and slopes and intercepts and confidence intervals and all that stuff. But I, I, again, I want to keep it, uh, uh, keep it uh, kind of interesting or keep it simple this week because we do have Thanksgiving coming up. So uh, also, guys, down here I want to uh, calculate what's called the residuals. So when I hit compute, I can get tunnel vision right here on this line. And I can see that the value, and so you'll get your r and your r squared. That's why I didn't go into that too much before. Uh, you can see that the value that goes with your calories is your slope. So it's either b1 or m, depending on the notation. So the slope here is 0 0.061, and the intercept is negative 2.022. Now I go into a lot of detail in, I think, the third or fourth video uh, on the interpretation of the calorie, or of the uh, uh, slope and the intercept. Now something kind of cool that we uh, I don't go into as much are these residuals. Now I do have one video that's uh, that's just all about residuals but residuals play a really important uh, uh, rule, very, very important uh, role in creating a rule, that's hard, kind of hard to say, uh, about whether or not our relationship is truly linear. So, guys, you're going to get into ultimately having relationships where you look at X over your residuals instead of X over your Y's. So, this is called a residual plot. And what it does, and again, I'm just kind of presenting this uh, quickly because I go into a, uh, a lot of detail on this, I think, in the fifth or sixth video. But... Residual plots tell us a lot about the relationship between X and Y. So we start out, so I'm going to put a 1 there. We start out looking at the relationship between X and Y. We end up looking at the relationship between X and the residuals. If we get a scatter plot that is random, that tells us that the original 
relationship between x and y is linear. It's kind of weird. It kind of it kind of uh, defies common sense in a certain way. It defies, in, uh, at least, intuitive sense. I think uh, if if we see a pattern, we don't get a pattern. So if we see a linear pattern, we don't get a pattern with the residuals. If we see a pattern with the residuals, for say we see something like this, which is a typical standard U shape, then what we've got down here is a non-linear pattern. So non-linear gives a pattern of the residuals. So actually we would uh, we would actually have something that would actually kind of be fit like that for this example. So if we see scattered, kind of like a shotgun blast, it means that the relationship between x and y is well modeled by a linear function. If we look at our residual plot over our original x and we get a pattern, it tells us that this original relationship was not linear. And again, you might say, well, you're going through this awful fast. Uh, I am going through it fast because uh, I just wanted to give you a preview of what's coming up uh, in the video. So, guys, there's only, uh, only two hours um, um, of videos this week uh, in, in addition to, actually, I think it's 112 minutes. So, uh, I'm going to try to keep this one about 15. So, you know, really only about uh, um, uh, two hours videos. And again, this is five hour class. You should be getting about five hours of videos, uh, four to five hours of videos. So only two hours of videos. So guys, I go into a lot of detail in this stuff. Uh, 